Hi Aries, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your March 1st to the 16th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive right in now, Aries, and see what this time frame has to offer you. Okay, so I'm going to start with your spirit animal cards. Aries, March 1st to the 16th, 2020, Aries. 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 Show me clearly, 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 show me clearly. You have the whale spirit, which is trust the great mysteries, and you have the mouse spirit, tend to the, to the small things. So you're going to see the small things really matter here for you. And you're also going to see mysteries start to unfold from the small things, from things that you might have overlooked before. March 1st to the 16th, 2020 Aries. March 1st to the 16th, 2020 Aries. March 1st to the 16th, 2020, Aries. March 1st to the 16th, 2020, Aries. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. This one right here, which is rebirth. And this one right here is inner child. So you have the Earth Star Chakra, which is located six inches below your feet. And you have the Heart Chakra, which is, you know, located in your heart, like, yeah, where your heart is, so, here, let's see, Aries, March 1st to the 16th, 2020, 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 Aries, March 1st to the 16th, 2020 Aries. March 1st to the 16th, 2020 Aries. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Fantastic. So at the center of everything, we have the Three of Swords. Crowned with justice. Okay, so that's a really good sign. This is also a Libra energy, a time frame, September 23rd to October 22nd. Then we have the Ace of Swords, okay, a gift. The Five of Swords, so a lot of the mind coming through. The High Priestess. The Nine of Coins, which is beautiful. And we have the Fool, so new journeys, new opportunities. The King of Coins, Earth Sign, Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The Sun card, oh, I love that, and I love that. Oh, wow, okay. And the Seven of Swords, okay. So during this time, your totem animals, your spirit animals for this time, whale and a mouse. So whale and mice here. So whenever you see these during this time, this is going to be spirit communicating with you. This is going to be spirit saying, remember, trust in the great mysteries. You don't have to know it all and you won't know it all, but trust in the great mysteries. And then we have the mouse spirit, which if you see a mouse or you come across the image of a mouse, it means tend to the small things. Do not forget the small things. So yeah, because so often we are so caught up with the big broad strokes and the future that we forget the now. So pay attention to the now. Pay attention to the moments of things. And that is going to be astoundingly powerful for you during this time. And it's also going to be tend to the small things. Don't get caught up in the details because that is what spirit is warning against, being caught up in the details. But it's tending to the small things, tending to the little things that are going to be growing and growing and growing during this time. And really looking at 
what is important to you and for you. Then we have rebirth. You are being reborn. You are entering into your power. You are looking at yourself. You are looking at what you desire and you are being reborn. And there's a sense here with the earth star energy as being reborn to your roots because it's connected with the inner child. And I'm just seeing just that peaceful, beautiful smile on her face. It's kind of like embracing the inner mysteries of childhood. It's embracing you know, that inner child, even if you had a really bad childhood, it's, it's looking at your joy. Okay. And it's looking at it through the eyes of a child, not reliving your childhood, but it's saying, I have this, this beauty, this peace around me that your angels are nurturing during this time that your spirit guide is developing during this time. And it's seeing things with new eyes. It's having that beginner mindset, which in Buddhism is is one of the ways to approach a problem. You know, you have that beginner mindset. You look at things through new new eyes and new understanding. And by opening up the heart chakra to your inner child and just even just visualizing yourself, giving your inner child a hug, saying, I'm there for you. I'm here for you. You know, I love you. That can be huge. And that can actually open up a lot of waterworks. So here, as you are moving forward, the heart chakra is also for forgiveness. It's compassion. It's acceptance. It's nurturing yourself and moving forward. And it's, it's joy, laughter, love. And as you do so, you're going to move forward in greatness. You really are. There's going to be a greatness around you and a sense of your heart falling into balance. So your heart chakra is just going to be so important to you during this time. Because at the center of everything is the, the three of swords. Now, the three of swords at your heart in this reading is, is saying that there are pains, there are sorrows, there are heartbreaks, there are disappointments that need to be looked at. Now, does it mean that they need to be solved? No, not at all. But it does mean that the things that have held you back, the things that have hurt you, that have made things overwhelming, your heartbreaks, your pains, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to put this in a little box and just kind of forget about it. It's looking at yourself and saying, okay, I, I know what I want. I know what I need. And I'm going to be moving forward towards my truth. And I'm going to be looking at the sorrow, the pain, the disappointment I have been through. And it's not going to cripple me because I'm not going to let it, but I am going to be learning from all the setbacks and it's going to give me, and it does give you Aries, a very unique approach to things, a very beautiful, a lot of beautiful insights that if everything was easy, you know, if you were that, I always say the spoiled prince on top of the hill, you know, that person who just has everything you know, hand it to them on a silver platter. Those people are insufferable. And here, you're not being insufferable. You're looking at what you want. You're looking at how you're developing. And you're seeing the heartbreaks that you have been through. And that's actually leading you to the sun. Because here, what I love about this card, and the links to these decks will be in the description box below. But what I love about this card is that you know, in the Rider Waite Smith deck, it is a heart with three swords stabbing through it. So it's heartbreak, it's pain, it's disappointment. Here, she's fighting back. She's like, you know what? No, I am not a victim. I am not somebody to be walked over. I am taking control of my life. I am going after what I love and what I want. And as you do so, you have the sun right here. I mean, you have this person being able to send off flaming arrows, being able to embrace their joy, embrace their passion. And that's really what you're going for. And there's a sense of profound intellect to you. There's intellect and clear-headedness. There's also a sense of facing towards the east, yes, because the swords face towards the east. And, you know, the rising sun is following you. You're looking at a new dawn and a new day with so much more insight and understanding. And you're embracing justice. It's like, I am nobody's fool. You know, I'm not going to be pushed around. And you have this strong connection with air sign energies. Yeah. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You also have a strong connection with earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Now, these air sign energies, including Libra right here that we're talking about, they can be giving you a bit of problem or you can have a tendency during this time to really overthink. And as you overthink, you're going to add anxiety because you're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, this is what's going to happen five years from now if I make this decision. And the fact of the matter is you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. So let things evolve. Let yourself move forward. With the justice, you are seeing a balance coming in, but you're also seeing a strength coming to you. You're like, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is how I need to move forward. And that is what's guiding me. And nobody and nothing is going to take away your power from you. Then we have the King of Coins. The King of Coins, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Prosperity, Success, Stability. This is this is the North, so this is kind of like your North Star guidance is 
your your prosperity, your abundance on this earthly plane, but also the justice that needs to come or the justice that is coming in. And this is being very sensual, very practical. This is, you know, you might not see those two as as combinations that make sense, but there's going to be a a sense of spirit is saying seeing everything that you have worked for, everything that you have gone after. And with the king of coins right here, it's like I have worked so hard for this. And people are going to see you. The kings, for me, are the actors upon the stage, the queens, the directors behind the scenes. So people are going to be seeing you. People are going to be saying, wow, I really value the way you handled that situation. You're going to have a good hand with money during this time or what you value as much as money. You know, very good at, you know, balancing time, organizing things. So here with the king of pentacles, there's a prosperity to you. There can also be somebody who is a bit older. It's kind of like 25 and up who, and it, th th that's not older, but you know, 25 and up who is very practical, very down to earth, has a very pragmatic approach to things. Their pragmatic approach might not be what you want to hear, but it is going to help bring justice into the situation. This can also be somebody who very much deals with money, any legal issues, kind of, you can see progress coming with them, things, you know, turning in a in a favor favorable light during this time. There is a sense of prosperity coming in, and there's also the sense of having worked so hard, having been so dedicated to yourself, to what you want, to what you need, and the way that you want to move forward. And as you're embracing this, you have the High Priestess. Now, the High Priestess is mysteries revealed. Okay. It's stepping into secrets. It can also be a spiritual awakening at your root right here, which with the seven of swords can kind of cause this bit of disarray. You might feel like, oh my gosh, I have to defend myself. I'm seeing things all in a new light. People have to understand where I'm coming from. The fact of the matter is they might just not. They might not understand and they might never understand. And that's a them problem. It's not a you problem. What I'm seeing with the seven of swords here with the high priestess, secrets, secrets are revealed to you. They move you forward. They help empower you. There is a sense of greater light. The veil is lifted from your eyes. You see people for how they truly are. And it might not be all the time, Aries, but you're going to see people for who they truly are, maybe in drips and drabs, maybe, you know, at certain points and you might be taken aback. You might think, wow, I always thought I could trust this person. And now I'm, you know, questioning their loyalty to me. I'm questioning, you know, their motives, you know, what is it that they want? Where is it that they're heading? You know, that kind of thing here with the high priestess and the seven of swords coming together at your root, but you're also going to be really seeing what's important and what's not, what you want to fight for and what you're like, listen, I'm tired. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And you know the deeper mysteries of your truth and your power, and you don't need other people's acceptance. You don't need their reassurance. There are going to be people, yes, you need their reassurance. You want their reassurance. You want them to be on your side. But for the majority of things during this time, it's like, I have worked so hard for this that I am not going to let you knock me off course. And this can be just the proverbial they. You know, what will everybody think? Oh my gosh, they will laugh at me. That type of thing. No, you're standing in your power. And with these deeper mysteries reveal, I always look at the high priestess, kind of like the Oracle of Delphi. And her, she she spoke truths, right? She revealed mysteries, but they were always in riddles. So do note that during this time, things may come to you very riddle-like. Like when you're sitting there and you're like, wow, I had this really inspirational dream, but I don't know why it's inspirational. It's just sticking with me. Or, wow, I heard these words to the song, or I read this passage in a book, or this movie, they, they said something, and it's sticking. It's playing over and over again in your mind. And you're like, why? And you'll have to riddle it out. And once you stop fighting it. You know, once you stop saying like, okay, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. It's going to come to you in quieter moments. And then there's just a sense of prosperity. I love this with the nine of coins, how happy and innocent she is with prosperity. It's kind of like, I deserve this. And it's been earned through wisdom, through truth, through power. And as you are embracing this prosperity, and also as people are seeing you, with this harvest coming in. Yes, the Nine of Pentacles does mean hard work because in the Rider-Waite-Smith deck, you know, it is a person, you know, having 
a field of grapes, and now those grapes have to be harvested, either to sell whole or to make wine with, and that's a whole nother process. So there is more work to go into things, but you are very close to the completion of your cycle when it comes to prosperity. And we can see that here with the King of Coins, the Ace of Swords, the Three of Swords, and the Nine of Coins. So there is a prosperity that is coming to you, okay, on on the ends, but there is a sense of, yes, you're getting this gift right here with the Ace of Swords. It's like you're getting this knowledge, you're getting this understanding, but with the Three of Swords, there's something very big that is held within your, self your, your subconscious that makes you self-conscious, okay, and that is keeping you from moving forward because it's this negativity, it's this fear. It can be that your dreams led you to heartbreak. I mean, seriously, with the Three of Swords at your heart, your dreams, Aries, could have led you to heartbreak, to pain, to disappointment. You feel betrayed by them. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have the sun, which is saying, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't look at it like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been a fool. Know that as you face this heartbreak, you are moving towards your, your worth and your power and your truth. Never, never give up on yourself is really what I'm seeing here. Because there is something absolutely exquisite that it's coming. I mean, the sun is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. So there's happiness, there's joy, there's, there's this connection. And as you're moving forward with the five of swords, okay, so you have the prosperity come in. The five of swords is doubts and fears. The five of swords is facing things. It can very well be karmic. It can be in your DNA path, you know, where you say, oh, this always happens in my family. You get to a certain point and then you just get kicked down or you think you're doing really well and the rug just gets pulled out of you. And you might've lived like this for a really long time. And you might have to be re reprogramming your mind, reprogramming yourself. So as you're looking at things, as this prosperity is coming to you and it's gracing you with wisdom, you are going to be looking with the five of swords. You're going to be seeing that doubts and fears or things where you're like, oh my gosh, not again. Like, oh my gosh, I can't move forward this way or I don't want to move forward this way. Things that you have faced before, they come at you. And now you are standing your ground. You've actually learned that you've learned a lot. You know a lot more than ever before. And you're able to know your truth, to know where you want to stand, how you want to move forward. And this leads you to not having to step on every stone. With the seven of swords, I really do see, my great grandma always said, don't step on every stone, you'll never get to the other side. And I I had the privilege of knowing my great grandma. So here it is, I'm just hearing her words, like do not step on every stone, you'll never get there. And it's kind of like choose your battles wisely. Choose your battles wisely because you're going. You're already coming to the game with ba with baggage, and as we all do, you know this isn't a picking on you, Aries, at all. Because here you have such success that you're moving towards after heartbreak, after pain, after disappointment. But with the fool, it's kind of like you have to start. You have to start. And this fool, he looks foolish. Like you'll sit there, and this guy could tell you your his dreams, and you'd be like, oh, okay, man, you know, maybe you you go sit down. But here, there is this sense of sometimes you have to see the fool. You do. Sometimes you have to go out on that limb for yourself. And you might not want to see the fool. I mean, who does, really? But you start to see your dreams. You start to see what other people think is foolish. And you might start to see how your dreams have led you to heartbreak, pain, disappointment. And you're facing that hardship again. You're facing that sense of, can I move forward? You know, am I doing the right thing? Do I even know what I'm doing? You know, what the heck is going on here? And then you choose your battles and you say, no, this is me. This is me. And there will be battles along the way. And people will insult you, you know, whenever they can. And the easiest, the easy insults will come first and they might keep on staying, but you keep on moving. You keep on motivating yourself. You keep on moving towards your goals and your power you are going to see that you break this. You break this karmic pattern, you break this ancestral pattern, and you move forward. And what seemed like a fool's journey, what seems like a fool's path, becomes to you this gift of knowledge, this gift of understanding, this clear-sighted you know, intelligence that moves you forward. Remember, the air points to the east. So here, you have prosperity coming as you watch the rising sun. And so as you're watching the rising sun, there is a sense of prosperity, the sense of abundance. Now, earth sign energy represents the north. So it can be, yeah, 
It can be some news that comes, you know, from a long distance, or from the north, from the east. Here, with the the northeast, with the air sign and the earth sign coming together, but it's some blessed news, and it can simply be that this news is like your north star. It keeps you moving forward. There's a bit of clarity. There's a bit of understanding where you're like, oh my gosh, now it makes so much more sense. And as you're embracing this, as you're moving forward in this power and in this truth, your subconscious message is the seven of cups. Now you have the repeat of the number seven here. And the number seven is very intriguing because the number seven is it's hard work and it's discipline and it's being very attracted to the esoteric, right? But it's also saying, be mindful, be mindful, because anything, any lies, anything that you do out of vengeance, vengeance during this time will come back to like bite you in the tuchus. It really will. It will be like coming back and you'll be like, wow, I didn't think anybody was going to know that or, oh, I can't believe I said that kind of thing. But also know that during this time, anything that anybody says to you that is a lie will come back to bite them in the tush. It really will. You'll be like, oh, wow. Okay. And it might cause a bit of arguments, but you're also looking at what it is that you truly want, you know, what it is that you desire. And there's a lot that you're dreaming about. Subconsciously, this time you could be caught up completely in daydreams. You really could. You could be caught up completely in daydreams. And especially since you're going to be seeing things a lot more clearly, but you're also going to be a lot more sensitive to the emotions of things. Okay. The high priestess is is saying, yeah, what I'm seeing here is that daydreams can become easier than the truth that needs to be faced. Okay. Because this can be overwhelming. So just be mindful that the the soul's evolution that is around you is going to be for what you can handle at this time, all right? You're not going to be pushed into an arena that is, is too much for you. So just be mindful of that. You Spirit might be saying, okay, I want you to accelerate this much, but you might counter back and be like, oh, I can only do this much. You know, I can only go this far because or else it's just too much. So here with the seven of cups, you're really looking at what you want, what you desire, what you need. And as you're looking, as you're understanding, focus on one thing. Focus on one thing, see it clearly, really look at it, and then you'll start to see as you focus on this one thing, others start falling into place. And it's also saying that you have to believe in your success. You have to see your success first in your mind's eye and not be afraid of it. You know, not sit there. And I know people say, oh, why would I be afraid of success? Well, what if this is your unicorn? I mean, come on, what if this is the thing that you have always dreamed of, always wanted, if you succeeded, first of all, you might have to do it again and you just have one unicorn. Now you're supposed to have two, like, come on. And, or, you know, dragon or whatever mythical, magical creature you want to call it, whatever, something that is unreal and unobtainable. That's what I'm saying here. You have to do it again. How do you do that? You know, what if you find out that you don't like unicorns? You know, what if it doesn't live up to your expectations? So a lot of times, and I know it gets people mad to say, But a lot of times we self-sabotage. I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with people I absolutely love and adore. And it's once we realize this, and it's where that brutal honesty comes in. You're not really going to be able to hide from yourself during this time, though you're not really going to want to, but it is going to be easier to tell yourself a lie, to say, oh no, I'm just doing it for this, or oh no, I'm just doing it for that, than it will be to face this truth. So just be mindful of this during this time, because it is subconsciously leading you forward, and you are going... you. You are going to see a lot of opportunities open up and it might very well be overwhelming or a lot of different avenues and you don't know which one to pick, you know? So here, just be mindful. Don't fall into the trap of daydreaming and really look at what you want and what you need to focus on. Pick one thing and as you pick one, you'll start to see it start to grow and grow and grow and you'll be able to pick more. You'll be able to have more abundance come into your life, but it's from that focus and it's from that self-belief. Your subconscious chakra message is dreams. Now we do have the man dreaming right here. All right. And so you are go- and getting his inspiration in his dreams. And this is just reiterating it. You are going to be inspired in your dreams, in your daydreams. And here with the, with the third eye chakra card, this is a sense of meditation being important. This is a sense of calming and centering your mind, great spiritual insight and clarity, moving your way and awareness of yourself and what you desire. Which leads you 
to the flamingo spirit as your totem animal, your spirit animal subconsciously for this time. And it says embrace the in-between, right? Embrace the in-between. Everything is not black and white. It's white page, black print. You know, we have the rule book. We know exactly what it is. People are messy. Life is messy. And I also love the flamingo card because flamingos are actually white birds. They turn pink because of the fish they eat. Be very mindful of what you consume and the energy that is around you during this time. It will radiate outward. It could turn you from a white bird to a pink bird or, you know, a yellow bird, big bird. So here, just, just be mindful. Very much so. Because you can start taking in, if you're around negative people or angry people, you will have a tendency to rather easily take on their emotional energy or match their emotional energy, and that can just bring you right down, Aries. So just be mindful of this during this time. All right, Aries, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you, and I love you all. Bye.